This is an overview of my 833C vacuum tube Tesla coil. It's actually a revision of an overview I did earlier on my 833A coil. This is the same uh, vacuum tube Tesla coil. The only difference is I'm using an 833C tube instead of an 833A and I'm going into more detail on this video. Uh, we'll start with the front panel here. Um, this top unit right here, this is the interrupter unit. This is what I can use to vary the pulse width and the pulse repetition frequency of the uh, coil. I can also operate it in uh, CW mode by flipping the switch. And then here this is how you adjust the plate voltage. Um, you can go to about 0 to 240 volts and that's into the microwave or 0 to 120 volts I should say, 140 volts I should say. And that's into the microwave oven transformer. And here I have switches to turn on the cooling fans, the filament power, and the plate power. This meter here is the plate voltage divided by 32 because this is actually the voltage into the microwave oven transformer and this is the plate current which again is actually the current into the primary coil of the microwave oven transformer and over here I have some indicators showing that plate power is on and filament power is on and moving to the side there's actually another smaller front panel over here because I didn't have room on the front. This is for the uh, to control the filament voltage. This is a small variac that control all it does is control the voltage to the filament. And this shows you what the voltage on the filament is. And for this tube, it wants to operate at 10 volts. So the reason I have this variac for the filament is by slowly bringing the power up to 10 volts, I can make the tube last a lot longer. It's much less stress on the filament. And you go up here, you can actually see, you know, here's that filament variac is telling you about. And if we go over here, looking behind the main front panel, this is the interrupter circuitry. This is the only solid state circuitry on the vacuum tube Tesla coil. And down there you can see this is the main variac controls the voltage to the microwave oven transformer. And looking down, well, let me go to the side for the end, for the other end. These are the two cooling fans. There's two of them, you can see here. And I can turn them on and off as needed. One of them is blowing mainly on the microwave oven transformer. The other one's blowing back toward the variac, because it can get pretty warm if you're really cranking the power up. Looking inside here, you can see the microwave oven transformer here. That's one of the bigger ones. Here is the filament transformer. This is a real filament transformer. I initially, I initially tried a rewound MOT, but they're so inefficient, it drew 500 watts of power with no load at all on it. So I wanted to get all I could out of the wall circuit without tripping the breaker so I switched over to a real transformer and let me pause for just a second I'm going to rotate this so that the uh, black background is here and it's you don't see a lot of clutter from the other machinery in here okay 
So this is looking at it from the other side. You know, here's the cooling fan, one of them. Uh, microwave oven transformer. It's three capacitors in parallel. In combination with this capacitor and this diode to make a voltage doubler coming out of the MOT to yield about 4,000 volts approximately. Um, here's the triac way down there which is used for uh, switching the uh, plate on and off in burst mode. And there's a Corcom EMI transformer here just to filter out anything that might be coming out on the power line. Um, kind of look back in there, you can see how all the wiring's laid out with uh, terminal blocks. Okay, moving, now that's the, I call that the power deck, the low voltage deck. Moving up to the high voltage deck up here. Well, let's start with the main thing. And there's the 833C tube, graphite filament. Uh, this is a cooling fan, and you actually want the cooling fan to blow across these uh, heat sinks, because this is where the majority of the heat, the heat on this tube collects, is up here. You know, blowing the fan down here doesn't do all that much, so that's why the fan's mounted high. And this this uh, vacuum tube Tesla coil follows the standard, you know, Steve Ward's schematic. There's nothing really uh, innovative here. Here's the primary coil, and I did come up with a way of putting on taps, which I'm pretty proud of. You'd have to see it. It's kind of hard to explain, but you can get these little connectors at uh, stores for connecting uh, power lines in a house. And I cut them in half and re-soldered them in such a way that I can tap onto here and I can attach um, at any one of these points I want to. Um, Here's the primary circuit doorknob capacitor, and I use copper tubing, which I haven't seen anybody else do, for the conductors. This here, this is a radiant heat shield. Uh, doorknob capacitors are affected a little bit by heating, so I shield the doorknob capacitor from the radiant heat from the vacuum tube with this heat shield. If you look on the other side, I don't know if you can really tell here, but I put aluminum foil you know, on there to make it reflective of the infrared. Um, here's the grid feedback coil here, and it's adjustable. I can actually slide this up and down to adjust the coupling. And here you can see a secondary coil. Of course, the secondary coil you know goes all the way to the bottom. And there's a aluminum toroid on the top with a brass discharge terminal. And this is something I had to add later. This is a spark shield. I found that I would occasionally get arcing between the secondary coil and this grid feedback coil. So to prevent that, I made this uh, spark shield to uh, prevent that. Um, one other thing at this end I forgot to mention. This is a power factor correction capacitor, which I can uh, switch on and off by the front panel. Now let me rotate this one more time. And keep the black background in place to avoid visual clutter. You know, there's that power factor correction capacitor, and 
this switch I can turn power factor correction on and off with. Okay, looking at it, the uh, high voltage level from the other side, there's nothing, the only th new thing to see here is the grid feedback resistor here, grid leak resistor actually. That in combination with this grid leak capacitor determines uh, the operational characteristics of the tube. Um, you can see a little more detail of how this copper uh, tubing is used as a conductor. Um, the output, it put out, puts out about 20 inch sparks. Uh, I could probably squeeze more out of it, but I'm pretty satisfied the way it is. It's very reliable. I'm not going to show it operating in this video. I have another video showing it operating if you want to see that. So uh, I think I've covered it. So that'll be the end of this video. Goodbye.